Well, welcome back everyone to yet another Yes Member Spotlight. Today is joining me at Police Health and Emergency Services is the sales manager. Her name is Fran Cheska Garrick. Hello, Fran. Hello, Bram. How are you? Very good. I'm super excited for, to have you here on the show today. Yeah, likewise. Likewise. It's, uh, it's going to be great to have a chat to you and share a bit with our listeners. Exactly so. And so maybe for everybody, first of all, to get uh, familiar with you, your current role at Police Health is what exactly? Yeah, as you as you mentioned when you introduced us, uh, I'm the sales manager at Police Health yeah. and um, been there, wow, for, for five years now, Bram. Yeah, very different to when I started five years ago, though, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm sure it has. You've uh, you've made your mark, as you always tend to do very well. Obviously, your team is a call center, which mm. one of the, the reasons why I definitely wanted to bring you on as well is because nobody ever has been on this uh, member spotlight. We have plenty of people in sales roles, but nobody really with a call center. And that's a very different thing because people obviously are only talking to people whose voice they can hear. They can hear the words they're using, the tone by which they say things. And so tell us a little bit more about your team, the size of it, and what sort of roles they're in and what sort of products they sell. Yeah, absolutely. So I've got, um, I've actually got two sort of areas underneath my my remit. So I've got the call center team, as you alluded to, and I've also got the partnership development area. Um, so I'll go the easy one first. The partnership development area works with our established partners. So we've got, uh, if I can just go back, we've got two brands, as you mentioned earlier, Police Health and Emergency Services Health. Now, Police Health is a is a mature brand. So we've got some established partners there in our, our police unions, and they help us promote our, our product to potential members. But then we've got Emergency Services Health, and that brand um, is seven years young. So we don't have the same sort of established partners as what we do with police. So our partnership uh, development area looks after the established relationships with the police unions, uh, and they fulfill all of our contractual arrangements. But then we also have um, on the other side, the emergency services side, where our partnership area is going out there and looking to form partnerships that can help us spread what we do out in the first responder community uh, Australia-wide. The other side of it then is the call centre. And uh, the call centre actually, once we get the leads come into our, our sales funnel, they look after those leads from the minute that they drop in to the moment that they they exit the sales funnel. And for anybody in sales, we know that that could either be, hey, we love you, we're signing up, we're coming you know, along with yeah. you, or it could be you know, a handshake and thanks, but no thanks, you're not for me right now. In terms of size, five years ago, Bram, we started with three and yeah, and we've now got nine call center operators. Wow. Plus in the, the partnership manager as well. Yes. So 10 people. Yeah, so 10 in people in total, but I do jump on the phones to help them out every now and then. So you're one of those hands-on leaders. And yeah. I heard in terms of the, um, the partnership development, there's actually a, an account management piece as in looking after existing relationships that have been in there for a very long time but also a business development side of, of things where new opportunities are being created, nurtured and converted. And, and that's very exciting. So obviously we know Jane, uh, who is in that role. Um, you've got a lovely team that we've also been uh, working with for uh, a number of months already. But before we go there, I'd like to kind of go back in time. You and I, we crossed spots in an other organization. So tell the, tell the little story about how that came about. <laughs> Well, in a different organization, um, I was actually recruiting and uh, your lovely wife, Andrea, came across my, my path and she absolutely blew me away. And then she came back for a second interview and did a presentation. And as soon as I saw her do that presentation, I went, oh my God, I have to work with this lady. She's amazing. And then of course, from there, Andrea introduced me to yourself. And, uh, and then I was lucky enough back in my St. John days to, to be introduced to communication mastery. And that would have to be six years ago now. Easily. And since then, <laughs> and you since have done then. the program a few times, right? 
<laughs> Bram, now come on. People might think I'm a bit thick and I didn't get it the first time, so I've had to come back. <laughs> Let's not let them think that. <laughs> well, but it's like a movie. You watch a great movie, not just once, not just twice, but sometimes three, four, five, six, seven times. And every time you do, you see it differently. Absolutely. Something jumps out at you that you didn't notice before. It's the yeah. same communication mastery. So, so far we have people that have done it six times. No so way. So it's not that they don't get it. In fact, they're actually very accomplished business leaders in their own right. And you're one of the ones has done it three times already. Yeah. So kudos and, to and you. To, to, to what you were just saying there, you know, I remember when I first came along and did it, I, I think I profiled at the time I was um, an ID or a DI and being in the vet sector, I was really struggling with what I now know is a C personality, um, very thorough, you know, and for some, there was just friction and I couldn't understand for the life of me why that was there. And then when I came to your first course, I had the biggest light bulb moment and it's like oh my god we are so opposites and I am going down my path treating her how I want to be treated you know fast let's go and and she didn't want that she needed the time to process and and make sure that everything was was compliant from an from an education point of view so um yeah I have to say going back the relationship certainly changed after that first course it's interesting also because back in the day when you did your disc profile it like you said it was ID now this it's almost like you've you kind of put this lady inside your own profile and now your disc actually reflects C as well at a high level yeah it does you're spot on you're spot mm. on. And it's an area where I've never, and, and some salespeople may be able to re relate to me here, but I've never been strong on the paperwork. Um, it's almost like, right, done, dusted, let's move on to the next one. So, <laughs> and, and you know, over the last five years, it's something that I've worked really hard to improve in myself um, to make sure that I, I am a little bit more thorough and I do take a little bit more care and, and consider and it has helped me with other C personalities. Uh, mm. I still have to work really hard at it, but yeah, it, it certainly has helped. Fantastic. And speaking of that, I think that's a really important one because a lot of people in sales management uh, management roles, they they tend it, the role tends to be skewed more towards I and D most of the time. I, I won't say always, but there's definitely I is always. Um, a very good thing to have in sales roles. And so for a managerial level, it's it's good too. But in your role now, one thing that I've definitely noticed is that you're very systems and process based. You know, how people use the CRM, how they work through the process, how they do the phones, you're sitting and listening in on the calls. You coach people all the time, providing feedback. You know, I, I think this is something that a lot of people that have a call center or have multiple people on the phone, even in customer service, could actually learn about. So tell us a little bit more what your process looks like th these days and what are the key things that you're always looking at with your team? I probably need to, before I do that, give you a little bit of context of what it is that, that we offer. So being a private health insurer, uh, we have as a company uh, purposely opted to sell and specialize in the gold space. So a very high um, level hospital cover and a comprehensive extras with a very high paying um, level of benefits. Mm -hmm. So a lot of other companies. A, sorry. And, and at a premium level in terms of, you know, the investment, right? Um, yes. Yes. Having said that, uh, over the last couple of years, other private health insurers who offer the same level of cover when they do offer the same level of cover we do they're actually premium their premium has actually jumped above ours so where yes it's a premium level but when you when you look at gold for gold they're actually um, now more expensive than us um, but that aside uh, because it's not always about the price Mm -hmm. um, so other insurers will, if I can give you a bit of a, a visual, be able to lay out a deck of cards and offer you a product from, you know, a whole range. We don't want to do that. Um, so for us, in terms of our sales process, it's really important that we engage with the person 
that we're talking to, we engage with our lead and it's got to be a needs-based selling model because we're not just going to sell for the for the sake of selling. Yes. We, we want to make sure that if that person buys our health insurance, they're going to use it because that is where they're going to see the most value. Mm-hmm. Now to uncover the needs, you've really got to lead with questions to understand and to, you know, to understand that person that you're talking to. We then offer a free comparison. Mm-hmm. And then what that does is help educate the person on the level of cover that we offer compared to what it is that they're shopping around for or what it is that they may have at the moment. Mm-hmm. Once we go through that process, you know, we get now get sort of to the end of it and we go, all right, are we in a position to continue this conversation? Yes, it's sounding good. Or is this where we have to be courageous and say, look, based on what you've told me, what you need, your life stage, we may not be the right fit for you right now. Love that. So, Love you that. know, and our team do have the courage to, at that point, shake someone's hand and say, look, love to help you out further, but it doesn't look like we are what you need and we respectfully let them go. So that's probably our sales process at a at a very high level. You know, Bram, as an organisation, we've had uh, over 98% customer satisfaction rating for the last 17 years. Um, in fact, we got 99% last year. So it's important for us that we bring people on the right way. We don't sell just for the sake of selling. That's not us. Um, and of course, once we do our bit, then um, the experience continues within other teams as well. I love it how you guys know really well what space you're in. Don't try to dilute it. So you play to your strengths. You measure the satisfaction of your existing clients. It's at an it's at an extremely high rating. So you guys are basically leading the industry nationwide, which is great. And not just one year in a row, multiple years in a row. And um, that courage of the, the seeing whether or not you're going to be the right ones after you've asked the right questions to uncover the needs and wants. I think that is such a golden nugget that I personally commend you guys for, for being that courageous and also be able to walk away from business if it isn't the right business. Yeah. You know, and that that is important because you know, it may not be the right fit for them now, mm. but if you do the right thing by that person, then they'll come back when the time's right or they'll talk about you in a very good light at the next barbecue that they go to. So, you know, it'll come around. It'll come around again. And, and you know, speaking of that, I think it's good to also that put that in a position because you guys have only one office. It's based in South Australia, but you cover the whole country. Correct. Yeah. Yep. What is your market share within the police space? Um, so I can't tell you a percentage of police officers that we've got covered, um, but I can tell you across Australia um, with both brands, uh, we're over 86,000 members. Jesus. 86, Oop. yeah. So we cover 86,000 people. So it, it's wow. it's a decent coverage, yeah. That's amazing. Well done. Yeah. And uh, have, having been going for how long? Uh, so Police Health was established in 1935. Yep. Emergency Services Health is about seven years. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I can imagine that the goal-driven person that you are, that you got your eyes set on the uh, the six digits. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be long. We'll be there. Let me tell you. <laughs> good, 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 good. Do you know, it's funny you should say that because when I first started five years ago, I remember celebrating with emergency services, if we got to 20 new members in the month, it was a celebration. Now, consistently, we are riding over 100 or introducing 100 new members into our fund. And it's just it's just amazing to see the the consistent level of, of growth now, you know, just five years down the track. Wow. That's and amazing. that's a testament to the team, you know. Yes. And I was actually just about to ask about your team. Uh, your experience, because you obviously worked in a sales managerial role in multiple organizations. Yep. Um, what is your experience with people that are in call centers and where do you see that they need the sales manager to do better? What sort of stuff do you do with them? You know, I think it's a motivation is king and keeping your team together in a call center mm-hmm. um, because call centers can be a a, a high a high pressure environment, you can get a bit of burnout, 
staff mm. turnover in call centres. So keeping the team connected and motivated is super important. What I have found challenging uh, probably over the last 18 months is the introduction of the hybrid working environment whereby, you know, going back two or three years ago, you would go in and you'd have all your people around you. So the coaching was really easy and you could tell by body language if somebody was having a bad day or whatever it might be. Now in a hybrid working environment, it's a totally different ball game, right? Mm. Uh, so I do want to say one thing that I personally benefited from, from the last training session that we did with you. And that was when my team went through it in March, April this year. It dawned on me that, you know, we've got ISs in the team and S is a very feely type person, people, I should say. So to connect with them a little bit more on a personal level, particularly in that hybrid working environment. And that keeps, that I have found has helped with the engagement and yep. and feeling like, you know what, actually my manager still cares for me. Um, you know, I'm not out on an island all by myself without the people around me. Yeah, so that that's Safe one place. thing that mm. has um, has worked really well. And, you know, we talk about going to different communication masteries and th and taking different things away. For me, that was a big thing that I took away um, out of the last course that I, I did with you. The other thing is, um, you know, in a call centre, that that conversation that you have is the only one you're guaranteed to have. You're not guaranteed to connect with that person again. So it's important, I think, to be able to connect with that person in the way they need you to connect with them mm -hmm. in that first phone call. Mm -hmm. And from a coaching perspective, when I listen into calls, it's picking up pace and their priority and thinking about, okay, now did my sales agent, were they able to match the pace? Were they able to pick up that this person actually needs some thinking time? They want you to send all of this information to them. So let's not push them. To, mm. to become a member today in that first phone call. So that that's where my coaching has been um, in the last six months since we've done it with the team because they really understand now after doing your training that you've got to match that pace and priority. Otherwise, you could lose them in that first phone call. That's it because uh, people like to speak to people that sound and behave like a like-minded person. Yeah, yeah. Right. So if we're coming in too differently – the gap then is very hard to bridge. And then there's no chemistry. There's no trust. There's no rapport. And you kind of lose each other because you're kind of drifting away, which means you mentioned the two really out of the big three, which is the only things that you ever want to mirror, which is pace, slow or fast. Second one, priority, which is either task slash business versus people orientation. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the last one is language. Right. So vocabulary, some people are very business like and they use a lot of very uh, typical things like business speaks like, hey, time is money. Come on, let's get on with it. Make it happen. Uh, let's get straight to the point. Let's keep the airy fairy wishy washy stuff. Let's just be straight shooters and let's get on with the job. That's a language that is called D speak. Right. And so, again, I commend you and your team for the work that you've done. And that you actually reached out to me and say, hey, my team is now ready for the next level and they need communication mastery. Because let's be honest, selling when you see someone is very different as opposed to selling and advising people when you can only hear them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if, if I can share, if you don't mm. mind me sharing a success story, Please. can I do that? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, he's always been a, a high performer in my team, but he's very much a deep personality. So he does have that business speak cut to the chase and and tries to keep people where he wants them to be. And he has been successful with it in the past. However, after coming and doing the communication mastery course, his sales results have gone to the next level. So like I said to you, he was consistently um, one of my best performers, but the last four months, he has introduced over 70 
new members into the fund. One of those months was his personal best with 84. So it just goes to show even a top performer can step it up even more by taking some of that on and making a change to treat people how they like to be treated. I got goosebumps when you said that. (laughs) And I know who you're talking about. Just to put that in perspective. So when you say 84 was his personal best in one month, as opposed to what normally? Regularly, they would write in the 60s. That's great. Yeah. And again, for everybody watching this, somebody who is a personally a very high D person in a country like Australia, there's only 18% of the general population in the same bucket, which means... If they don't change their style, they're risking of alienating 82% of the people that they might get on the phone. Well, and that's that's what, four out of five, right? Exactly right. So it's a huge percentage. So for somebody to kind of go out of their way and kind of undo the old adage that we all got wrongly taught, which is treat people the way that you want to be treated. If he were to do that, he'd only have a potential strike rate of 18% of all the phone calls that come in which wouldn't get him into top sales agents roles as such. So yeah. he's definitely gone. Let's above and beyond. Above and beyond. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, Fran. Um, you mentioned my wife who brought us together. She's been in that organization that you left after uh, and stayed on and had a few managers. And it's interesting. I find it really interesting when you start comparing one manager to another, how they deal with their team. And I kind of want to go back there because... This message is crucial for anyone who has a team and it's got to think about what does my team need so that they they can better look after our customers and prospects. This is me just observing how my wife responded with the three managers over a five and a half year journey. She came in super excited with you. She felt she was guided. She was directed. She was supported. She was challenged in a good way. So she got out of of her comfort zone. She learned new things and she always knew where she was at because you were very good at putting tables together and visualizing it and doing weekly sessions and make everybody in the know and just kind of always go back to the basics and keep it always front of mind. Then I could see like second time around, wasn't quite the same. Things were like a lot looser. She was more at on her own, a bit like what you said about, you know, the remote working and so on. She didn't feel the love. And actually, to some point, she kind of lost her way. I can candidly say so. Then a new manager arrived again. This person was more friendly, more engaging, more supportive, more nurturing. And it, it kind of went up again. And I could finally hear her say, you know what? I, I feel like I'm supported again. Anyway, all these managers, I know how to read their style on disc. They got a specific style. So what would you say to fellow managers who have a team that either are like-minded or very different? What would you say knowing now what you know to make sure that they get the best out of their team? Look, you've got to know your people and you've got to adapt your own style to get the best out of each person. And if that means that you've got to step out of your comfort zone to get the most out of a team member, then Just go for it because the reward is huge. Mm -hmm. The reward from a a personal growth perspective, Mm -hmm. but hell, you know, as managers, we've all got goals and targets. So if your team are motivated and connected with you, connected with each other, they are going to perform and work really hard because they love their job. They love coming to work. They love doing what they're doing. And people in those sort of environments, they thrive and they're happy to give 110%. I'll give you an example of um, a new staff member that I've got at the moment. Um, it, It took me back to my old workplace where almost off the charts see. And I was starting to get a bit, oh, come on, come on, just jump on the phones, just do it. You step out of your comfort zone. You can do this. And then when I, then, because he's recently done the course, course with yourself. And then when I saw the personality, you know, the, the profile, I went, oh, this is why, this is why there's that 
difference. So now my coaching style has slightly changed and it's, it's all right. You've got this and you're doing really well. It's, you've really got to know your people. And even though, you know, a C is not my natural style and I could feel that tussle, I had to step away from my um, ID and go, right, let's play in this C space a little bit more, give you a little bit more time, let you make your notes up so that you feel like it's 100%. And mm. now let's go, bring them along I, on the journey with you. I love it how you're treating them now the way that they want to be treated, which is very different from what all of us got wrongly taught, which is the way that we want to be treated. Because if people are different, you don't keep, let's say, trying to shove it down their throat, the stall that you would want. If you know that it isn't working, yeah. right? So we sometimes hit our head against the wall and we keep doing it. And we think like, geez, they're not changing. Well, we're not changing our approach. So we're better <laughs> than, you know, take a change for the better. And yeah. so you have done that and you're noticing now that it's starting to work better. Absolutely. And, you know, I think we only talked about this uh, earlier this week when you and I caught up is that people aren't difficult. They are different. And quite often when things don't go, you know, as, as we want them to follow our roadmap, we go, oh my God, this is all too hard or this is difficult. No, 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 it's not difficult. It's just that they're different and we have to adapt to get the best out of them. Yep. Exactly. Take responsibility, not just use the, the blame mm -hmm. finger uh, and say, hey, I'll send them and they're not good or call them whatever name. We take it back. Absolutely. Especially as leaders, you know, it's our job to know our people, as you said, and to help him to, to excel at what they do so that yeah. they help us all win. I'm not sure if you would know this thing here. And I'm just asking just because it kind of came to my mind a moment. Oh, ago. tough questions. You didn't prep me for these ones. <laughs> uh, well, we'll see how we go. But um, would you know from the nine people, actually yeah, the nine people plus yourself that have gone through communication mastery, obviously since April, and now it's November already. Gosh, that went fast. Would you have an idea in terms of, I mean, you mentioned already Sam, who's done really well with his PB, which is about 20% more than what you normally would do, uh, even though he was already an elite agent. But for the whole, do you got any idea in terms of ROI that you guys have gotten from doing the, 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 the program together as a team? Look, I couldn't give it to you in dollars, but I can tell you in terms of our growth yep. this financial year, yep. um, we are over, well and truly over um, our year-to-date target. Being able to have the right conversations the first time mm. definitely plays a part. And I do believe that through some learnings and some changes that the staff have adopted, that is well and truly one of the reasons why we are over where we are meant to be. And uh, almost by, I think it's 74 um, year-to-date new members over. Well done. Yeah. Um, I'm mindful of time here, Fran. Should people like to connect with you? Are you happy for them to reach out on LinkedIn, uh, which obviously we would add as a absolutely. link? Absolutely. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Right. You're obviously always hiring great people. <laughs> <laughs> so you never know that somebody reaches out and says, Fran, I want to come and work for you. <laughs> well, come and talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, because the team is growing. If there's one little success tip that you could give other fellow managers in a sales-related environment, whether on the phone or not, that you think is the golden nugget for sales managers, what would it be? Know your people, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. don't be scared to step outside of your comfort zone and change to work with your people. It's, that's, that's key. Got to be, got to be king. Number one. Um, also for me, it's about a sales team knowing that it's not a sale at all costs. It's a sale. If that person is the right fit for the organization, mm. because Happy people recommend other people and it helps with your organic growth. And organic growth is a very low cost way to bring people into your, your business. That's great. I love it. And I fully endorse that as well. Anyway, it's been a lot of fun. How do yes, you Yes. Thank you. Really enjoyed it, Bram. Thank you very much for the invitation. 
Likewise, thank you for freeing yourself up. I love what you do for your team. You're a great leader, inspiring. You're a good person. Love working with you. And I wish you all the best as well moving forward. Thank you, Bram. Thank you, Bram. Have a good <laughs> okay, day. Then.